Hey everyone, it's Allison, stlprostretch.com, and today we're going to be looking once again at the T and the X quadrant. But these are alternative exercises that you could use instead of the first group from my video on the basic leg stretches. We are going to start with a hip flexor. And the only reason I like to start with a hip flexor is because, well, mine are usually tight. And when I don't stretch them first and I try to do some of the exercises where I'm, my knee is in, my hip is in flexion, I just feel kind of jammed up. So I'm going to do a little warm up for the hip flexors. I'm going to grab the back of my right thigh. My right leg is be pushing down. I've, I've got it held steady with my hand. Your leg can be straight or bent, whichever you prefer. And my left hand is going to push the left thigh away from me. But the left thigh is pulling in. So it's pulling in, I'm pushing it out. Pulling in, pushing out. My arms aren't uh, quite long enough to get my leg all the way down to the ground, but that's okay because um, as I've talked about before, the beginning and the middle of the lengthening phase is really where the magic happens in terms of muscle health and elasticity or building that. And then I'm going to switch sides holding on to the back of my left thigh, left leg is kicking out, my right knee is pulling in, and I'm pushing my right leg away with my arm. Now if it were me, I would probably do the other hip flexor stretch as well, just because I like it and it feels good. Um, but you can, you, you don't have to do that one, you can substitute with this one, they all work. And next, um, we're going to be doing the central hamstring. I usually do this, and I think in the other video I did this one kneeling, but today we'll do, be doing a, a couple different versions, uh, supine on the mat. I have a strap in case you are not very flexible and cannot reach your foot. Um, we'll do it with the strap first. I have one of these ergonomic straps that has little holes for your hands so you can go short or long and you don't have to worry about gripping which is really nice. I am going to hold the straps, I'm going to kick my heel down toward my hip and pull it back the opposite direction. My, my heel is always kicking down toward my butt, I'm just um, letting my arms win and pulling it back until I feel a stretch. Now when you get to the top, if you want to point your toe, you'll get more hamstring, less calf. And then um, I'm gonna demonstrate the one where you would use your hands. This is a really good stretch if you can do it. So I'm grabbing my foot with my arms. I'm just holding my foot center. I'm kicking my heel down toward my hip, and my upper body is actually going to be a little bit of a counterbalance. So as I kick my heel down and I'm going to pull up with my arms, my upper body becomes that counterbalance. That's the resistance. And then I'm going to let my leg win and let my arm win. And then there's a third, there's, a th <laughs> there's another one. Um, and this one you can do with the strap around your foot like this. I need to lengthen the strap a little bit. And uh, I'm going to kick my heel down toward the floor and then pull it back with my arms. You can do it this way. Or lift your chest and grab the back of the calf. So now, again, my upper body is going to be the counterbalance. Probably not as much range of motion here on the down part. 
and then I'm pulling back. My leg is always kicking down toward the floor. You could hold the back of your knee, the back of your thigh. I just feel like with the back of the knee, then uh, the knee starts to bend, and which is fine. And then we'll do the other side. So three central hamstring stretches. Take note, so I'm kicking my heel down, pulling back with my arms, down, pulling back with my arms. I feel like the strap, I like to have it a little bit, a little bit shorter for this one. Down and pulling back up. You may want to take note and see where you're feeling this. Um, are you feeling it more on the lateral side of your leg? If so, that may mean that, you know, you have a little bit of a struggle or a battle going on between your central hamstring and your lateral hamstring. The lateral hamstring is usually the one that wants to do most of the work. So if you can kind of focus on... Um, Focus on trying to feel that central hamstring. I know it's hard. And then the other one. Grab the bottom of the foot, kick down, and pull back up again. Down and up. So if this is not going to be happening for you, you can go ahead to the straight leg version. which would be either with the strap around the bottom of the foot. So we're kicking the leg down, and then I'm pulling it back with my arms. Whew, that feels lovely. It's kind of funny because I talk about how I used to do a lot of yoga, and I, I did do some um, uh, I anchor yoga for a while, and we did learn a stretch that was so similar to this one. Um, it was like this pumping action back and forth, and I was so taken by it. I was just really fascinated by how that felt. And it was meant to be um, kind of a warm-up, but also um, to, build, I think, to build elasticity in the muscle as well. And then the other alternative is hand behind the calf. You're going to kick down. And let your upper body bring you back down, always kicking down with the foot and pulling back with the arms. So we have hip flexor. We did a lot of hamstrings. You might want to do the other hip flexor stretch, the kneeling hip stretch, flexor stretch after that. It would probably feel really good. But now we're going to move on to the abductors and the adductors. So last time we did the standing version of the abductor stretch with the standing figure four. This time we'll be doing it on the back, pushing the ankle out into the knee. Push the ankle out, push, push, push. Let your upper body be dragged along for the ride. Keep pushing the ankle into the thigh and pull back with your arms and bend your elbows. Remember, this is not an abdominal exercise, so we're not rocking. And I'm trying to just let my upper body be dead weight. It's actually a passive stretch for the upper back, which feels a little nice if you have a tight upper back. And then we'll switch legs. So I'm crossing my left ankle over my right thigh. Hands go in the hole created. Interlace your hands behind the back. Push the left ankle out. Keep pushing out and then pull back.
and then adductors. So the last one I had you in your socks, sliding the feet apart and back in again, or on your back, pushing with the arms and then in. This one will be kneeling. You can put something under your knee if you like. That's fine. I'm going to take my right foot out to the side. And I've got my toe down. If you turn your foot out more, it's going to be more medial hamstring, and those muscles are just so close together. They, um, I think sometimes it just depends on which one's stronger will do the job. But I am turning my toe in so I can get that um, really the more medial uh, aspect of the leg. I'm pushing my foot into the mat. I'm going to take my hands behind my head and lean while I'm pushing my foot into the mat and come back up again. Probably not as much range of motion as the other stretches, but this also works as well. And then I'll switch sides. So pushing the, out, pushing the inside of the foot into the mat, my toes are pretty, pretty forward, and I'm going to bend the side. You want to try to keep your, um, do, don't stick your butt out too much for this one. I mean, it, if it does a little bit, that's fine. If it does a lot, that may indicate that you have really tight hip flexors or a uh, hip flexor, including your uh, rectus femoris, your quad. So, um, you know, that's something that you might want to take note of. Okay, and then uh, we're going to move on to the X quadrant. So, um, medial hamstring. We're going to do a kneeling version of the medial hamstring. I usually do, this is the one where you're, you, you're on your back. This is the one from um, the first video where I've got my leg out to the side. I'm going to be kneeling. Oh, there's so many other ways you could do this stretch as well. And I've got my blocks here. And instead of putting my foot forward straight ahead, I'm going to put my foot out to the side. I'm going to be pulling my heel in toward me to activate the inner hamstring. One thing you want to do when you're doing this motion is think about pulling with the inner heel so that when you're, mm, <laughs> think about the medial hamstring as your running backwards muscle. So it would be a, an action, let's see, I can stand, but I don't want my head to be. So it would be an action where you're going back like that. So you're internally rotating to fire the muscle and externally rotating to stretch the muscle. So you might have to think about your pulling with your inner heel for this one to get the action. Otherwise, your other hamstrings are going to take over and just do it all. So try that. I'm going to pull in with the inner heel to pull me forward and then let my leg externally rotate to pull back. I don't feel like this is quite as effective. Um, as the stretch on your back, but the added bonus is you get a little bit of a hip flexor stretch as you come forward, so that's nice. And you get to practice the action of this muscle. So I feel like since if you're one of those that has a really tight outer hamstring, you need to strengthen your inner hamstring to help balance it. Because they both can help you, they, they both have some of the same actions, but um, the lateral hamstring is more external rotation and the medial hamstring is more internal rotation. And then we'll switch legs. So my foot's out to the side. I'm pulling with my inner heel to pull me forward and letting my foot externally rotate to go out. 
You don't have to. You could keep it in and see what you feel. When it comes to some of the advanced stretches, we do, we do have different rotations for each muscle group. So um, experiment with, you know, what you, what feels good to you or what feels weak to you. You know, am I having trouble activating this medial hamstring? Can I even feel where it is? Really focus on strengthening that muscle. You may want to put a little more oomph into it. And then we'll go with the balancing um, muscle group, which is the quad, the lateral quad. Um, so as I said before, lateral quad, medial hamstring, they balance each other, agonist, antagonist. So um, medial hamstring does this to, to, to activate muscle. Quad does this, lateral quad does this. So those actions are the exact opposite of each other. Um, so I'm going to use the chair again for this one, and I think I'm going to turn it so that you can see what I'm doing again. And I'm putting my pillow on the floor. Stack them up. If you have knee, if you have knee pain, um, really tight in the knees, you may want to get a lot more padding, and you, you may want to keep, keep your knee a little bit or a lot farther away from the chair. So, I'm on my left knee. I've got my right foot out to the side. I'm going to use a block, just put that down. And then I'm going to flip my foot up the chair. Here we are. Push with the foot into the chair. And then keep pushing and back it up. You could start with some strength here. If you're super tight in your quad, you may just want to um, come forward and relax on the way back a few times. Uh, you can rotate in this one as well. I'm turning in a little bit. I'm tur turning toward the leg a little bit. You could also put your foot out a little bit, but just be careful you don't torque your knee. I have just moved my foot out to the side a little bit. I do feel it more in my lateral hamstring, but yes, just be careful with um, your knee. I don't want you to do anything that hurts. I should make that a statement at the beginning of every single one of my videos. If it hurts, stop doing it. And then we'll turn to the other side. So quad, I got my leg out to the side. My right knee is down. Hand on the block, flip it up, and here we are. The kneeling stretch. Push the foot into the chair to come forward. And then you might want to just do that a few times before you go into the stretch where you're pushing into the chair <laughs> and backing it up. Because it, it is an intense stretch, that I will say. This is probably my go-to stretch for workout recovery, but I think that women in general, no, I can't say that because men do too because I've stretched a lot of both women and men that have just super tight quads. I think um, the quad is just a huge muscle group, and we, we tend to use them, I think, a lot more than our hamstrings. So. And then we will move on. We did, last time, we did the lateral hamstring as the tipping bird, remember? And this time we will be doing the lateral hamstring in the chair, which is my favorite because I can sit down and watch TV and do this. So I've got my knee, my right knee. I'm going to angle it over toward the left, my left hand grabs the outside of my foot. I'm going to kick my foot down toward the outer hip and pull it across the body with my hand. Okay. 
if you cannot reach, use a strap. I feel like I need to get closer with the strap. And I'm getting, I'm getting pretty much the same stretch. Notice what you're feeling in the front of your hip here. I'm feeling a little bit of jamming. Could be my groin, could be my hip flexor. Um, in that case, I might just want to go back and stretch my quads and my hip flexors again. And then come back to this, or my, and stretch my groin, come back to this and see um, <clears throat> what do I feel. So kicking down toward the outer part of my left hip, right arm comes across and drag it over, down and over. This is a yummy stretch too. This is a really great stretch and it, for me, I get it all the way through the calf. And again, if you want to grab that strap, you can, you can use the strap um, as well. You could even do this as a straight leg stretch coming in across like this. I didn't mention that, but you could do it that way. Um, and I'm going to put my foot, my right foot, over toward the left. I'm going to push my heel into the ground. As I come forward, I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. That's my stretch, and then I'm going to push out of it. Take some balance. So if you have a chair or you have something to hold on to, this is probably a little easier. You can, for this one, Turn your toes in. See what that does for you. You can turn your toes out. See what that does for you. When I turn my toes out, it's a whole different ball game. It's a whole different stretch, but it's, it feels good. So, And then we'll switch legs. So I've got my foot crossed over the body. I'm pushing down into the floor. I'm going to walk myself forward until I feel a stretch and then I'll wash myself out. Now, I can go down a lot farther, but I'm just trying to work within my range of motion. This lateral hamstring feels very tight. But remember, this is not about being super bendy because super bendy isn't always better. I can vouch for that because I got super bendy and um, a lot of times it can just lead to joint instability because your muscles are not strong enough to support on all sides. So always remember, being strong and functional movement is much better than being super bendy, in my opinion. Again, you can turn your toes out to the side. Up again. Whew. <laughs> That's a good stretch. I am definitely feeling like I've been needing this my whole life. I don't think I've done this since I've had classes, so this, this particular stretch. And then we'll end with groin. And another way you can do your, your groin stretch, we have done, um, we did the butterfly stretch, open and close. Well, you can increase your strength and stretch if you so desire. Maybe this is one that's just challenging for you and you get worn out quickly. Um, if you take a block and put it between your feet, try it there. You're gonna get a, you're going to, I feel like you, I have to use my muscles more. And then um, the other thing that you can do, and I'm not gonna do it against the wall, but I'll show you how to do it against a chair. I'm pushing out with my arms and in with my knees, by the way, always pushing always resisting and always moving. Uh, 
other way to do it is up against the wall. But I'm going to demonstrate here because <laughs> the wall is really far away and I don't know if you'd be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to put my feet, imagine this is the wall, up against the wall and I'm going to push open and close here. Block between the feet. More, um, I think it's more difficult. You may find this stretch really easy. I mean, you probably need to do it a lot. <laughs> you need to wear these puppies out because this muscle balances your lateral hamstring. If your lateral hamstring is tight, I feel like the lateral line ties into the external rotators of the hip as well a little bit. So if those are tight muscle groups for you, then probably working this groin a little bit more will help you out with balancing the muscle groups. We did not get to the downward dog stretch. We'll save that for next video. We'll do some calf work. Um, and that's it for today. I hope that gives you some other options for your basic stretching routine. Remember, they can be substituted at any time. They, they all work. So have a good time.